this video, I want to share with you some tips and tricks for flipping a classroom. To do this, I want to use an acronym called NEWS, N-E-W-S. And the goal of this is to engage students during the class time and avoid student rebellion. The N in NEWS is no additional workload. I recommend you do not use flipping to add more to a student's schedule. Second, I recommend the E is for experiential learning in the classroom. Make sure that the students are actively engaged and they're having good learning experiences in the classroom. Thirdly, weekly assessments, both summative and formative, and short video segments. Let me give you a little more detail on these. Also, if you want to find out more, I show a link here for a paper that we wrote on this, that shows the research evidence for these four items. The first one is no additional workload. Make sure that your flipped classroom is a true flip. Don't use this as an opportunity to add even more. So when I first started flipping, I had homework and then we had class assignments. Don't do that. Use the homework in class so that you don't add more to their already busy schedule. Second, experiential learning. In my case, I use the class time for engaged problem solving, as you can see on the left. Or, on the right, field trips. You can see them here, engaged in the community, seeing what's happening around them, applying what they've learned in a new way. That could be during discussion, brainstorming, bringing in guest speakers. Make sure they are engaged in the topic. Weekly assessments to keep students on track. One of the downfalls of a flipped classroom could be that students don't keep up with the material. They're not coming to class to get the material, they're doing it at home. So in my case, the students would watch all the videos of the week before coming to class on Monday morning. At home, they would be watching the videos and taking the online assessments as shown here. But this is key to have a formative gate check before coming to class. This could be questions interspersed within the video content or, in my case, an online quiz they take before coming to class. It's due actually midnight, the night before the class. I would say this should be low stakes, not worth very much, but worth enough that the students complete it. In my case, I also use this for the students to ask questions. I gather all those questions before class and then try to address as many questions as possible during class time. In addition, I recommend that you use summative weekly or bi-weekly assessments. So this is where the students really show you what they learn. And this can be high stakes. My quizzes were worth 50% of their final grade. We also had a cumulative final exam that was another 20%. And so students know that even if they don't watch the video, they've got to watch it before this big summative quiz or test that they have. I recommend you do that at least weekly or bi-weekly so that students don't fall behind. The S in news is short video segments. So in my case, this shows all the modules that we had in one week that were less than about two hours, but each individual video was about five to 10 minutes. Now you can see here there was one that went for 14, 18 minutes. I would try to avoid that, but if you have to to finish a complete thought, that's okay, but the goal should be to keep your videos between about five and 10 minutes each. So those are my tips and tricks. No additional workload, experiential learning during class time, weekly assessments, and short video segments. Thank you.